In this video, I'm doing a review of the Komaribi Weekly Planner. So it is an Australian planner and the owner actually reached out to me and was like, hey, I have this planner, would you like to do a review? And I was like, mm, let's have a look. And I was like, oh yeah, it's got a really good weekly layout. So it has horizontal line for the days of the week, a giant checklist, there's a habit tracker and a meal planner and it has a different layout that I haven't really seen um, in many horizontal planners. So I said yes straight away. So I do just have to tell you that like disclaimer, I got it for free. Um, but as always, I say what I think regardless of whether I paid for a planner or not. So immediately, um, absolutely love this cover. So it's a hard cover, but it's not just one boring, plain color. So we have nice gold foil effects. There is gold foil corners, and there's even um, spreads around to the spine. Like most when you put it on a bookcase, it's just plain blue, and you're like, oh, what planner was that again? Or what Doc Ridd notebook? Um, this one has it printed in really nice gold foil, and there's even something on the back as well. So I really love the cover. It's nice and sturdy hard cover. It's not going to bend. You can see I'm pushing on it. It's not really moving. So it is um, six inches wide by 8.5 inches high, the, the cover, but then the pages are slightly smaller. Um, they're A5 page size. There are other styles um, to choose from, like cover styles and a daily, but I chose the weekly because I'm more likely to use that um, version. So at the front here, we have a yearly planner. So like an overview calendar. To be honest, I never really know what to do with these pages other than maybe use a dot marker or a highlighter and do like a color key, like maybe just shade in the boxes or put a little star or, or some sort of dot or something to signify maybe I'm going on holidays that day um, or I don't know, just like birthdays. There's just not really any space to write in these boxes. There is an overview calendar there if you want it. Now, because it's an Australian planner brand, we have the Australian holidays which is very hard to come by. So I know if you are a fellow Aussie watching this video, you're probably like, finally, there's an Australian planner. Um, shipping is reasonable to Australia as well. If you're in the US, um, unfortunately there is no US holidays page and all of these holidays are pre-printed on the monthly spread as well. So that might be a con if you're in the US, you could always wipe them out if you don't wanna um, look at the Australian holidays. They probably don't mean too much to you. Then we have the overview calendars with just the dates at a glance for 2022 and also 2023. And the start date for all of these, so this overview calendar, the monthly and the weekly spread, it always starts on a Monday. So it's consistent, which is great. Then we go into the life goals section. So here they've categorized the main goals people have like health, family, travel, and have put three columns, three, five, and 10 years. So I really like this format of like, where do you want to be? And then you work backwards. However, um, I do need some more space to plan things because you only get just like a dot point list. There are some dot grid and notes pages at the back of the planner. Um, but for me, I do really like some structured goal pages. Like I'd probably have maybe like four pages for each of these categories where I would plan it more in detail. So this is a good quick reference list, but then you would need to do your own um breakdown of the planning later on on the goal pages which i'll show you in a minute for each month or those uh, notes pages at the back of the planner so then we go straight into the first month which is january so this is a dated planner for 2022 from january to december and unfortunately there are no tabs and if you want to flick between the months you just have to look in the top corner in the left corner there you can see that the months appear which is not too bad because most of these hardcover um, planners don't normally have tabs anyway. Okay, so my first thoughts on this monthly calendar. I like the layout. It has a good use of space. You get the usual notes sidebar. You've got some open-ended space up the top where you can do whatever you want with it. You've got dates at a glance for the previous month and then the next month. But one major con for me is the six rows. So, like, you only really need five rows. And then you see down the bottom here, this whole extra row was created solely for the 31st. For me, I would just restart the numbering up here, 31st, and I don't need to see the days from last month because I've got another calendar, you know, that I used last month that I plan those days on. So I never really understand um, why planner companies will do the six weeks, and it's a real pet hate of mine. So that's definitely a, a major con for me with this monthly spread, but otherwise looks pretty good. And you'll notice that the theme throughout is very uh, minimal, so you can add your own colors and color coding and color pens, highlighters, whatever you want to use. And also the layout is quite good at maximizing the page so there isn't too much dead space. Um, so that's really good as well. And the pages lay flat. So I'm nowhere near the middle of the planner and they all lay flat, which is really good. Um, most hardcover will want to close on their own. You have to you know, hold it open with one hand while you're trying to write really awkwardly. 
this one does actually um, lay flat. So for each month we have this um, goal page. We've got one, two, three goals, step them out, and then a reflection for the month. So I love this format here, goal and then break it down. I probably use this as well for maybe like supplies to buy for the goal or like reminders, like, hey, this person's helping me do this on a, on a certain day. So I'm moving my office at the moment, for example. I'm like, okay, this person's helping me move furniture. Like just those kind of notes for the goal. Um, but there are those notes pages at the back of the planner. So I like the idea of this, but for me, I would just need a bit more space. And then you can do your little reflection, like maybe your uh, monthly reflection questions or whatever, however else you like to do, maybe like rate the month for each of your goal categories, whatever you want to put in there, it's open in box. Over here, we have the budget for the month. We've got income, expenses, and there's also a savings section down the bottom as well. Simple um, budget layout, really like it. So the main point um, of why I wanted to do this review is this weekly spread. So you can see straight away, it's not just a generic horizontal layout. It's actually got a few different elements to it. So we have a full um, section, like the same size for Saturday and Sunday. There's no combined weekends, which really annoys me. Like that's when I need more space to plan, not less. So it's great. You've got equal amount of space for each day. We've got a habit tracker. Again, Monday start, Monday start. Monday start is all consistent. Love that. Because some planners, for whatever reason, will have like the monthly spread starting Sunday and then the weekly starting Monday. And I'm like, no, like, can you keep it consistent? So big pro for that. Um, and then we've also got a meal planner down the bottom here. And the other reason why I like this is because of the giant to-do list. So instead of having like a skinny little column shoved off to the side like vertical layouts do, um, that's the main reason I go for horizontal. Because usually you get that bottom box here where you can put notes and, and checklists and anything else. So for this layout, they've managed to squeeze an even bigger to-do list and like meal planner instead of the notes. And it's just a really good layout that fits a lot on the page. And I was a bit concerned about choosing the A5 page size because normally I will go for a seven inches wide by nine inches high, like a medium size. So I was like, mm, will A5 be a bit too small? But I don't think it is. I think this is good proportions. And I'll measure all the line spacing for you, you know, between line height. Um, and I'll have all of that in the blog post, which will be linked down below if you're a bit mm, about A5 as well, because I know it can be a bit too small for some people. At the top here, we have a little dates at a glance calendar. Um, and you see that for each weekly spread, it's repeated. And if I show you another one, a bit more obvious. Um, oh, that's the monthly spread. That's why it's not there. Yeah, see how it's bold for the current week. So I really like that extra little touch. Nice attention to detail. And then we have an open-ended little gap up here where I'd probably put like, main priority for the week or reminder or birthdays or anything else you want to flag and they have different quotes throughout as well they just flick you can see it's the same same layout but different quotes throughout and there's no split weeks so in the plum paper which i find a bit weird they will split there's a split week like this they'll they'll duplicate it so that's a bad example so let's say the first was, let me find one so I can actually show you. They basically duplicate the week and will create two copies. So this here where the, the next month starts in partway through the week, they would have this week in July and then they'd repeat it again um, for June. And I'm like, what's going on? You've got like a duplicate spread. So this planner does not do that. It will just continue on. You can see we're in July now. We've got a few of the last days of June. So... Just keep in mind, because I think some people do prefer it, I assume they do, um, but for me, I like it in this style where it will just continue on and I can just flick to, you know, July and plan those last days of June and then go back to June um, monthly spread and do the review. So we've got all the weekly spreads for each month, monthly calendar, there's two pages at the start of each month, and then the weekly spreads start again. There's three ribbon bookmarks. You could mark your monthly calendar, your weekly, and then some of the extra pages at the back or those goal pages at the front. And they are slightly different shades of gold, as you can see there. And I like that that like, coordinates with the gold foil on the cover. I think that's a really nice attention to detail. And the pages aren't a yucky yellow either. They're a nice like creamy white and they feel really smooth. So I will be doing a pen test and the results of that will be linked in the blog post down below. Let me just get to the end because I want to show you some of the other extra pages. Okay, so at the end of December, we go into the year in review. So we have 
favorite moments, biggest achievements, lessons learned, things to improve, and how can you make the next year better? And it's that same like dot point list format. Then over here we have the bucket list. So this is a bit confusing for me. So we've, we're reviewing the year, but then we've got our bucket list for the year right next to it. So generally I prefer when these kind of goal pages or planning the year ahead are at the front of the planner rather than at the back. So that would be my suggestion to move these um, with the goal planning pages and, and the annual overview. I think that would be a, a better layout because then we go into accounts and passwords and then travel plans for the year and then those notes pages. Now the paper feels good and I'm definitely doing that pen test but I do notice that there is a bit of show through already. It does say on the website that there is no ghosting or bleed through. So I'm definitely keen to see if this paper really does hold up in a pen test. Because I'm not too sure at the moment. Okay, so then we have the lined notes pages. There's quite a lot of these. As you can see, quite a lot at the back of the planner. From memory, I think it was about seven notes pages and 10 dot grid but i will um double check that it'll all be in the blog post so if you want to know the exact numbers just look at the blog post it'll all be listed in there it is a five mil um, dot grid and as you can see none of the dots are too close to the margins so that's really good you've got plenty of space it really annoys me when you're on like one of the dots right here and you've got your ruler and it's kind of awkward to rule up so i actually prefer when it's got these wider margins anyway because otherwise i'll just create my own like i won't use um, any dot grid that's too close to the edge of the page so that looks really good again like it's laying flat on its own and at the very back here i just wanted to show you the pocket folder so it has a different um style than most planners normally you have to come in from the side here and it actually really anno annoys me like especially when the, the slit is this close to the spine if it's back here it's not so hard to get your hand in there but generally they don't have this where you can come in from the top and I do much prefer this. I feel like if you've got like mail that you're grabbing on your way out the door and you just want to put it somewhere and you just, you know, stick it in the folder like this rather than having to open up, like lay it down somewhere and get it in the side. And I feel like it's just easier to shove things in from the top of a pocket folder. Yet most planners don't do it that way. So I really do like the layout of that. And then we've got the back cover. So I hope you found this review helpful. I do really like the weekly layout. Um, maybe some of the goal planning pages and some monthly notes or dot grid pages interspersed throughout the planner would be great. Um, don't do the six rows per month. I feel like there's a bit of dead space there. Maybe you could white out those extra boxes and use it for some notes. Pages lay flat, like the coordination, the cover feels like good quality, and it's Australian, which is very hard to come by. So I hope you found this review helpful. I'll have all those details in the blog post, which will be linked down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I usually post a new planner review or bullet journal notebook each week.